Once I became a public defender about 27 years ago, I learned that you didn't have to belong to a fancy yacht club, and you could kind of be a hippie sailor. You could, you could uh, move from neighborhood to neighborhood. You could drop an anchor, and if you didn't like the neighborhood, you could move on. A year ago, right around now, in, in late July, August, sailed from Noank, Connecticut to Flores Island in the Azores. It's 2,200 miles in a boat that, with an electric motor. But I'm not much of a sailor. Remember, I had already when you, when you... crossed the Atlantic during hurricane season, and that was kind of scary because I was where I, I had kept track and I knew that there were no tropical storms the first year when I went to 2,200 miles. The second part was going to be the easy part. You're, you're not going to get tropical storms between uh, the Azores, which is 1,000 to 800 some odd miles off the coast of Europe. And you can get some rough weather, some squalls and stuff, but I didn't expect anything terrible. I had a kind of rude awakening. I had a um, because my boat's electric, I have four solar panels and a, a uh, wind turbine. And uh, on Wednesday night, my I'd left Monday, so really it was my third night at sea. Um, I saw smoke coming out of a hatch in the very stern of my boat, and I oh my god, I didn't know what the heck to do. I went and opened it and then I turned around and there was smoke coming out of the cabin. It was just full of smoke. And I went, I first thought, oh, it's gonna be this 48 volt electrical system, which wasn't on, but I let the prop freewheel. And it's got a four bladed prop. I was going seven knots in this 35 foot boat, or had been doing that. And the prop is freewheeling. And I thought, oh, I somehow cooked all the wires and I'm feeling wires and taking engine covers off, the engine cover off, and it wasn't that. And I'm breathing, I'm in thick, thick, acrid smoke. And so when I, when I, so finally I realized, damn it, it's, it's the 12 volt system. And I, I took out, was looking at batteries and I noticed the wire was hot. And then I found that the, basically the, the wind turbine had incinerated itself. That was probably because I didn't wire it or fuse it properly. But I learned later that this is a pretty common thing. When I got to a big boat yard in, in um, at Lagos in, in uh, Portugal. Everything within the path of its wires got burnt. Hoses, sails, and it was sitting right next to, I had, above it was an outboard motor really fastened on that I've, I've never, I've never, I've never used, I mean, I haven't used it until I left. And uh, some gasoline, which I don't use. And next to it was a, a my real backup in case the electrical system, in case I can't charge the 48 volt system. I have a, a little Honda generator I got generator I got on e eBay, and I actually had gas in the tank, which it shouldn't have. And uh, so this thing could have been. I mean, I could have been dead. You you just think I sucked. Nobody would know what had happened. Hoses, bilge pump stuff, sort of got slightly incinerated. But the real thing was it's just acrid, acrid smoke. And because the, the, ho the boat was so battened down, I couldn't even open hatches and stuff. And I was going and just breathing this horrible smoke, wondering what the hell, you know, how bad is this for you, whatever. And, and I was about to grab the life raft, thinking, you know, am I gonna abandon? And then it self-extinguished, it was out.
I try to keep a watch. Uh, when you're way offshore, to be honest, I, I, if I get up every hour, uh, it's maybe in the beginning, but um, offshore, I have a servo pendulum gear that it steers the boat with wind and it's pretty good. So long as the boat doesn't somehow come about and tack and then I'm going the opposite way or the wrong way with a back-winded jib. But, um, so I try to get up, use, when, it, when I'm fresh, when I've had sleep in the beginning of a trip, I, I notice if there's a shift. I notice if it gets rough, I notice, but towards the end of a trip, I get so tired that there's just nothing. You know, the sleep deprivation, and you say, well, what do you do? The physicality of it all, getting slammed around, getting almost beat up. So the, the, the next event was the event that shows what an amateur sailor is. during the day as much as I can so I can get up at night. I have an egg timer to wake up every hour and just look around and make sure the boat's still sailing. And um, so the next day, probably two o'clock uh, Greenwich Mean Time, I hear this explosion, actually earlier in the morning, maybe 11 a.m. I hear this explosion and I run up on deck and I see this thing that is never supposed to happen. My boat has a deck step mast and it has to be supported in four directions. You know, on two sides, the front and the back. If it's not, it's gonna fall over. And I looked and my head stay was off and swinging around on the starboard side um, with the sail, this 155, this huge jib or Genoa all the way out, which is how I was, and this drum and it was just swinging around and here I'm, I'm in the you know in the Atlantic with nice swells and and this thing is swinging around and I looked as I say in that thing I looked up and I, I, I remembered I had this baby stay which I'd use it only goes about 18 or 20 feet up a 43 foot high mass and, and it, it, it's to keep the, the the mass from pumping in really really rough, rough weather I had friends who said, oh, I did it wrong and it's not worth having and all this other stuff. So I remembered baby stay and I took it out. It was sort of, and it's got a shackle on it, I hooked it up. And I'm pretty sure that saved my mast, although it wouldn't, that alone, without a head stay, was not gonna keep the mast up for long. And then I started this process of try, trying to get, first I dropped the, the, the jib or the, the genoa off this thing and it's mostly in the water. And then I've got this thing and it's bouncing around and swinging and I'm trying to get it hooked back, put the clevis pin back into this chain plate in the front that holds the thing up. And you know, so you're getting this pin through this hole and you're at sea, so it's bouncing around. And even alone, I really couldn't get it tight enough even if I loosened the back stay and did all this other stuff. So finally I look around and I see that I have, right from Norwalk, a Dutchman boom, boom break that I'd gotten, and actually the guy here who lives in Reading had, had, had personally delivered it because it had been broken, and he repaired it to my house before I left. And, and I noticed it had the biggest shackle on the boat that I could fit in this hole. So I got, I took it apart, put it on, put the shackle on. I had, meantime, I'd taken the, the jib halyard and tied it up around cleats, and in six ways to Sunday, I was hooking this thing up. But it turns out my spinnaker halyard I had noticed just before I left and had climbed the mast, the, the, sh the shackle holding it was cracked and wasn't going to hold, so I couldn't use it to, as a backup to the to the uh, to, to the to the uh, head stay. And so what I did was I got this thing hooked up, and f f I used that shackle. I used the the the, uh, the, the, the jib or, 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 or general halyard first and tightened it and cranked it and got it up. And then when I got everything hooked together. I took lines and lashings, I went to cleats, I went around this little bowsprit I had. But I knew, I had already broken a Dutchman, that sha a, a version of that shackle, and I knew this shackle was not gonna hold this heavy mast up if, if I get hit by rough weather. So then I had this crazy dilemma. Um, for, at first I tried to sail with no jib, but the winds weren't great, and I'm noticing I'm going like a knot and a half, and I'm thinking, damn it, I'm gonna be out here 
you know, I got to get a thousand miles at a knot and a half or 900, I'm, I'm going to be out here forever. And if I'm out here forever, I'm going to get caught by some sort of storm and I'm going to get dismasted. But if I pull the jib out all the way when the winds are half decent, I'm going to get dismasted too. So I had this sort of sweet spot. How far, how much jib do I use? And how fast do I move, dare move versus how slow do I dare go? If I go slowly, I'm going to get hit by a storm and lose the mass, whether the sails are up or not. Mm -hmm. Not a hurricane, but some sort of squall, something nasty. And if I go fat, too fast, I'm going to lose the mast anyway. And if I lost the mast, the boat is finished. I'm here, the boat's here. I suppose not much reason for the drama. I'm beat up, I'm sore, my back hurts, my knee hurts. I'm banged and bounced around by everything. What a disaster, averted. Thank God. But for yes. Here I had good winds, and that I was really lucky because if I wasn't on a on a on a, on a broad reach of some kind, and was pointing into the wind with that head stay parted, my mast would have just fallen over. There was nothing to hold it on. When you're coming to a mainland, that's really dangerous. You have to stay awake. And I aim towards the coast of Portugal, but you know, if I fell asleep, I'm going, you know, Sunland within 20 or 30 miles of the coast or going along the coast. If I fell asleep and tacked into, you know, I'd sink, you know, then you would get killed, you know, you'd end up on the rocks. The last 20, the last, 12 hours were are the most critical. I've been awake a lot. I was exhausted. I was all banged up. When I went to put that head stay back, it kept hitting me in the head. And I actually had like a kayak or a crash helmet, you know, in case I sunk and I had to go up in a helicopter. And I, uh, I put that thing on, it kept bashing me in the face. Here I am about to arrive in the Azores, which is part of, you know, it's like a, it's a province of Portugal, though it's pretty a damn independent. And that's got a kind of, that's an interesting little segment because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm making every effort to get there and not to sink. You know, I thought it would be really bad to sink, you know, 150 feet from shore. I didn't, I didn't want to do that. But.